Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to the History Squad. Now, this video is on location in the middle of England on Cannock Chase. This is the Commonwealth War Graves Cannock Chase site. Uh, I used to come up here as a kid on my bike, on my bicycle. And in those days, there was no main road outside and houses were miles away. But it seems that England is shrinking. But this little hallowed corner, I'm going to show you around because there's a couple of twists on this site. And I never appreciated it when I was a kid. I just used to come up here and think, what a shame. Well, let's have a little look at the Cannock Chase War Cemetery. So all of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission sites have got the Cross of Sacrifice here. And at the entrance, you will always find the, the little book which tells you all about, you know, who the dead are and where they are. But I've just opened this one. And missing is the guest book. There's not a guest book, so people have been signing here. But this is the sad thing. Look at this. Inside this book, somebody's put the photograph of a fallen New Zealand soldier. And you can see he's just a boy. Unfortunately, there's no name or address or ID on him. I don't know if this was placed on a grave and the workers have put it in there. I just don't know. But this is one of the real sad things about this cemetery. It's not just sad because it's a war cemetery. Well, I'm just going to show you this one over here. This is George, George Hicks. He was 58 years of age when he died in the Second World War. Must have been on reserve or at the end of his career and he died of natural causes. I used to come and tap the grave as a little boy because we've got the same surname, Hicks. Well, I've now done my family tree. He's my grandfather's cousin. So after all these years, you know, I can tap the grave because we're of the same blood. Now, the reason there's a cemetery here in the first place, a war cemetery, is Cannock Chase, this massive area in the centre of England. It's down to the fact there was a massive training camp here during the First World War. It's thought that around half a million Allied soldiers were trained into these camps during World War I, and the New Zealand Rifle Brigade figured quite big here. It was from about 1917 that the 5th Battalion of the New Zealand Rifle Brigade were brought into Brockton Camp to train fresh troops, using their experience from fighting on the Somme and the Messina's Ridge. They figured so big here, they eventually made Cannock Chase their headquarters, turning Brockton Camp into a self-sufficient establishment. They even had a church and held parties and tea dances for the locals. In 1916, a hospital was built here at Brindley Heath, which had 12 wards and housed a thousand beds. There was even a German prisoner of war camp built here that housed captured German soldiers during both the First and the Second World War. Although this is a Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery, there are more Germans and Austrians buried here, mainly from what I can tell from the First World War. But the date for most of these soldiers, these servicemen here, is the end of 1918, the beginning of 1919. It's the flu epidemic. And that flu epidemic, it didn't differentiate between German, Austrian, British, New Zealand. It swept through them all. And when you look along some of these rows, it is literally heartbreaking. So we're going to have a look at particularly one grave and tell the story of this guy so far from home. And here he lies in the middle of Cannock Chase. Here we have second Lieutenant Evan Innes Jones of the New Zealand Auckland Regiment. He lies with other New Zealanders. Dinks, I believe, was their nickname. All those in this row died on the 7th of November 1918, or just a couple of days before. And it's the same throughout this cemetery. Most of the men who lied buried here were killed by that terrible flu epidemic. But this guy particularly reflects what men were like in those days. He enlists in the Auckland Mounted Rifles 1914. He fights in Gallipoli. He's wounded taken back to New Zealand, he's discharged 1916, he's done his lot. But when he recovers in 1918, he re-enlists, he gets commissioned, he's posted here to the training camp in the middle of Cannock Chase, ready to go back over to France, and he is struck down 
by the flu epidemic. It's so ironic that this guy, you know, full of courage, he's been through the mill once, Gallipoli, and then he's back, he's going to go over to the Western Front. What a guy. Bang. You look at his age, he was only 29. But you look at some of the other ages, 20. In fact, along this row, that's the main age. It is heartbreaking. All of these men in this row died within a week of each other. One of the wonderful things about the Commonwealth War Graves Commission is how hard they work on maintaining the cemeteries, whether you be a, a German casualty, Austrian, New Zealand, or a Brit here. The upkeep, you are literally in a garden in the centre of England. But you have a look at this. We have Rifleman R. Strickett, a New Zealand rifle brigade, flu epidemic. He's one of those casualties, one of those sad, sad things. But his stone is beginning to weather, and it won't be long before you won't be able to read his name. But the Commonwealth War Graves, they don't allow that to happen. We've got his neighbour here, Rifleman Corrales, New Zealand Rifle Brigade, same month of death, but he's got a new stone. And this guy's been visited. There's a little button there for Anzac Day. Yeah, New Zealand. So... Look at that, Portland stone, absolutely wonderful. So it's amazing over in this sector of the cemetery here, the German and Austrian sector, you look at some of the names. We've got Siegfried Strauss over there, died 23rd of December, 1918. And here we have Martin Abraham, died 27th of June, 1919. So he's a prisoner of war. He's still in England, waiting to be released, I suppose, but he's been hit the same as all of his comrades along here by that terrible flu epidemic. But Abraham, I am sure that's a Jewish name. So isn't Martin Abraham one of the thousands of German Jews who fought for the Imperial German Army during the First World War? And he's paid the ultimate price. And here he lies in the middle of England, Cannock Chase. But this is only a few hundred of the Germans that are buried here and Austrians. Over the hill, over the hedge and down the bottom of the hill, there is an enormous German cemetery full of thousands of men, both First and Second World War. And we're gonna go down and have a look and pay our respects to, I suppose, what they were in those days, our enemy. So as you're coming through the entrance, as you can see, it's this stark, almost Germanic place, which is what most of their cemeteries are like, the German cemeteries. But here on Canic Chase, as you come through the door, here is the sculpture, the sculpture of a fallen warrior by Hans Wimmer. But now we have a new thing on the wall at the back there, which I like to commemorate 50 years of friendship working together for peace and reconciliation between Staffordshire County Council and the German War Graves Commission, Bremen, August 2012. You see, when I was a little kid, I was raised on the stories of the First and Second World War, what the Germans were really like, what they did to me, granddad, all those kind of stories. But when I went to live in Germany, I found a different side. And I fell in love with the country and I love the people and I speak a good chunk of their language. And I come to these places and I think to myself, just what a waste. What would the world be like now if we'd have not had the First and Second World War? So here we are, right in the middle of the Second World War section of the German cemetery, German War Cemetery, Cannot Chase. Now this is Sector 6. And what I notice about most of these guys is that they, on these two rows, they died after the war had finished. But we have, I suppose, what you would call a bit of a celebrity here, although he's dead, of course, and it's very sad. This is Ernst Busch, General Field Marshal. And he is one of the, if I think he's the highest ranking. There is a general in here, an SS general somewhere. But amongst all of these, you just see the names and you see, you know, we've got Gefreiter, Alvin, Staglich, 
and Roman Galbast. And you look at the names, okay, so he, he was a corporal, he was a private, he was soldaten. Then you've got unknown soldiers and all of them amongst it. But it's easy to miss. You've got guys in here who were shot down in the Battle of Britain, who were bomber crew. Now, when I was stationed in Berlin, I used to visit the Berlin Commonwealth War Graves and the, mainly the bomber crew there. And I said, how oh, sad. I never thought about them being buried here. And this being Canuck Chase, there is a problem. Deep underneath us, coal mines. My first job from school, down the pit, underneath this ground we stand on. I didn't like it, left, joined the army. But if you look over here, you can see that there are lots of graves where they've just laid the stones flat because of the subsidence. And it, it's interesting the way they lay the graves out. So you've got Josef Rogel and Niels Flon. He's a grenadier, Ogre, Befri Ogre, Be Ogre Fry, <laughs> Corporal, let's put it that way. They're buried here, right? Then there's some buried the other side as well, because if you step across, you look at the back, there's two more here. And that's why there's quite a lot of spaces in between the graves. They're making room for them all. It's... I sometimes think, you know, oh, it's a shame. You know, nobody comes here, nobody comes and has a look. Well, just down yonder, there is a grave that's been visited and they've left a little memorial on it, a little candle. So Germans, Austrians, they do come here and they do pay their respects, but every day local Brits come here and they walk up and down the graves, they read the names. But there are still over, I think it's over a thousand German graves spread throughout Britain, even in the Channel Islands. But they are in Commonwealth War Grave cemeteries, so that's where they're going to stay. Just like the Germans that were up the hill that I spoke about earlier on. But we're going to go down, have a look at some of the First World War. Have a look at the other side of the cemetery. So here we are in the First World War section of the Canna Chase German War Cemetery. Even in the First World War section, you have evidence that graves have been visited, the candles that have been left there. But when you look at all of these graves, they weren't buried here at the beginning. There's 4,787 men buried here. They, many of them were moved on the 16th of October, 1959. There was an agreement that they would consolidate the German dead that were buried throughout Britain. There are still, as I mentioned before, over a thousand uh, German war dead buried throughout Britain, even down in Guernsey, but they are buried in the Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery, so that's where they're going to stay. This is where it's all been centralised, and I must admit, it is a peaceful place. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of the heathland that you have in Germany. You know, it's just as I finished, there's kind of a bit of an irony here. You have these memorial crosses and they have the little blue flower on it. It's actually a forget-me-not. And that is the German equivalent of the red poppy of the British. Before the Second World War, the Grand Lodge, the Freemasonry Lodge, I think it was Bremen, adopted the forget-me-not flower as a tiny little flower that they wore on the back of their lapels because they knew what was coming with the Third Reich, that they would be in danger because the Freemasonry were on the list, the Holocaust list, if you like, enemies of the state. So they wore the little forget-me-not. There is a little saying from Germany, Ich hatte gefallen Komrad auch. I have a fallen comrade too. It's interesting visiting this German cemetery here in Canic Chase. There's a, I've always thought of it as a dark place. It's sad because there are men buried here, but it's a dark place. You have four mass graves, I suppose you call them, and each one of these four contains the remains of the crews of the Zeppelins that were actually fetched down. Now, just to explain, Zeppelins. These were airships filled with hydrogen with a steel frame. The German had lots of these Zeppelins and each could carry up to two tons of bombs. 
The Germans made about 51 Zeppelin bombing raids on Britain during the First World War, killing over 550 people and injuring around 1,300, causing over a million and a half pounds worth of damage. And when you include the Gotha bomber raids, casualties were a lot higher. It has in fact become known as the First Blitz. Out of the 84 airships that took part in the raids, around 30 were shot down or lost in accidents. Now, bombing with these Zeppelins was totally inaccurate. Bombs often fell miles away from their intended target. And in fact, on one raid, which was bound for London, they ended up bombing Hull in the north of England, over 150 miles off course as the crow flies. On the memorial here, it tells you how side by side the comrades, the crews of four Zeppelins shot down over England during the First World War here, found their eternal resting place. And they were bought from other cemeteries. What we've got, the original burial places were Potter's Bar, Great Burstead, and Theberton. And they're all buried in individual caskets. Interestingly, the crew of the first Zeppelin bomber to be shot down are buried here in this plot. Commanded by Hauptmann Wilhelm Schramm, the Zeppelin was shot down on the 3rd of September 1916 during a bombing raid over Hertfordshire, which killed two sisters, destroyed several houses, and damaged a church. Lieutenant William Leif Robinson, VC, that's Victoria Cross, of the Royal Flying Corps, engaged the Zeppelin by firing two 40 round drum magazines with incendiary bullets at the airship, but he failed to set it on fire. So he had another go and emptied the third magazine, which eventually set the Zeppelin on fire. Well, members of the crew perished as the Zeppelin crashed into the earth, and here they lie, all together, in one grave. But what gets me is this is the beginning of the bombing of civilian populations. When you think we hadn't been up in the air for very long, the Wright brothers, yeah, they, they'd not long taken off when we've got Zeppelins, and then later on you've got the bombers, and then it starts. You know, I've met people from Dresden, from Hamburg, when I lived in Germany, and Berlin, of course, and they're saying, oh, what happened in the Blitz? Well, my parents were kids in the Blitz in Birmingham, friends in Coventry and London. The horror. You know, we had that wonderful gift of being able to fly. And what did we do with it? We used it to kill civilians. And we're still doing it now. This, to me, it's a sad place. Yes, of course it's sad. But it's also a dark place because it reflects what we are like. Well, I hope you found that tour of the war graves here on Cannock Chase interesting. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, why not have a look at joining our Patreon community? The link is in the description. Now, before I go, quick shout out to some of our Patreon members. We have Cameron, Robin Schultz and April Galash. Hey guys, thanks a million. Without your support, I wouldn't be here in the middle of England doing these films for us. Bye for now.